let's get our covers prepped and ready for our spine. So this is just some of the painted canvas that I have. Um, you can see I do love myself a rainbow theme. In fact, I went ahead and painted my covers and I've still got some more that I wanna do to these, but I had painted this piece of canvas quite a while back and I wanted to do a kind of a rainbow themed journal. So I thought, what the heck, let's just use this. So I've got the front and the back ready and um, painted and I'm gonna use this canvas for the spine. So, so what we are going to do in order to make our holes for our spine and know where to put them. First of all, I marked the covers, top, front, and back, and, and marked the top. And this, I kind of, um, it, it's pretty self-explanatory that that's what this is. You can tell by the art, but once you start working on these, it's just easier when you have these marked. And I'm gonna cover the inside of this. So I'm gonna make that mark just so I know. Okay, so for this, for this spine, what we are going to do is decide how wide we want the spine to be. And whatever we decide, we will cut this and add an inch and then double it so we'll have enough to fold over. That'll make more sense when we start working on it. But what we wanna do is we want a half of an inch overhang. So before I painted, before I started painting, I went ahead and marked my half an inch. That's real easy to do. I just took a ruler and, you know, made a mark half an inch, half an inch, and drew a line. That way, I kind of left myself a margin there. And I did that on the front and the back where that spine, that canvas spine is gonna overlay when we sew it in. So the next thing that we will do is we will, and, and I'll tell you, this is, you can do this several different ways. You can leave this random. You don't have to measure these marks for your holes. Um, or if you want them a little more uniform, you can kind of guess where you want these. And I looked back to see how I did this one and you can see that this is not even. And I kind of like it, the unevenness to it. I think it just kind of lends itself to that handmade look when it's a little bit off and not just in a straight line. And I did these, they were about from the hole to the hole, I'm gonna say it's probably about three quarters of an inch. So let's just lay our ruler here and just give it a little bit of mark. That's about a half an inch down. And I'm gonna go about three quarters three quarters, and again, this is just a rough. So you can see, hopefully, those lines. You can kind of see how I marked those. So I'm gonna do that on this side as well. And again, these aren't lining up. Where I sew this canvas on this side is not necessarily where I sew this canvas on this side. So it does not, it does not have to, it does not have to match. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way. Hopefully I am in frame there. There we go. So next, what we're gonna do is this crocodile, I'm gonna use, I think this is an eighth inch. Yes, it's an eighth of an inch. And we're 
we're just gonna we're just gonna line this up again not precise and put our little holes in here I will say oops sorry I hit the hit the camera there hit the this is a little this is sort of satisfying to punch through this book board and it does make a little mess it's not like the traditional hole punch that has a, a uh, thing that keeps a holder so you can see there there's our holes and again those holes are going to be covered up but it makes it a whole lot easier to sew through. So let's come over here and we're gonna punch these. Now there is a machine, I think it's called a cinch, that does a uniform hole punch. If you've ever worked with a, a binding machine it, it makes a uniform punch where you can put binding combs in. Um, so if you have one of those, you can use it, but this works, this works very well. So there we go. We have our holes there. And next we're going to prep our canvas. Next we need to figure out, this is where my math will make sense, hopefully, to you. We need to figure out how wide we want our spine. I will tell you, with this particular journal, I wanted a two inch spine. So, I needed a three inch width. So, I actually did a six inch width. So, I could fold it over and I sewed this. Now, I didn't tell you that you needed a sewing machine in the video beginning of this tutorial. You don't have to sew this, but if you have a sewing machine, it will make this much easier to um, fold your canvas in half and sew around it, and it will just keep it nice and neat. You can glue it or Really, I don't know that you would have to do anything to it besides fold it, but this just gives it a little nice, uh, nicer edge and keep, helps keep it um, together when you are sewing it on. So I think for this particular journal, I don't want a two inch width. I think I want to do a one and a half inch. One and a half inch. So I'm gonna add a half an inch for each side which is another inch, so two and a half. So I'm gonna double that, so that's five. So I need five inches across. This I'm gonna have this spine go down, so I need five inches across. So I am just gonna mark this five inches. And again, this does not have to be precise. As far as the measurement, but you do want it to be straight. So, there's five inches. So we can either cut this or we can use our craft knife and a straight edge, which is what I'm gonna do. And once we get this cut, trimmed, so now I have that that I can use for another project. And then, oh, we need to, we need to get our height. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna move down and do the bottom portion of this instead of the top. I like the colors that are here. Um, I think they blend better with this cover. 
So we're going to match this up and we're gonna, let's flip this over. In fact, let's just do this. That will make it much easier. And then we'll just cut it. And we'll make sure it's squared up. With our little grid here. I'm gonna move up just a, a snitch. So So now we have our spine. So once we sew that on, that will be our soft spine for this book. So I am going to grab my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew around this. Hey, okay. look at that. I got that sucker sewn together and Really, I wish I had switched out my black thread in my sewing machine for a white. That might have been kind of cool to have that um, contrasting thread, but I just left it, I left the black. But I did sew around it a couple of times and I, I tried to kind of make it a little wonky just to give it a little bit of, um, a little character there. So, we are now ready to put our spine on our covers. So this step, again, this is something that I forgot to mention in the beginning when we were talking about um, materials that you need. Um, when I learned to make this spine, she talked about Fabri-Tac. And I already had Fabri-Tac because I used this for other um, craft projects. And what you're gonna wanna do to hold this on while you hand sew it, is you're gonna want to glue the spine onto the book covers and let this dry before you ever try to sew this on. So um, I don't know what other glue you could use. I'm gonna assume that you could probably use just a really good craft glue. I also use the tacky glue for a lot of projects. That probably would work, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with the Fabri-Tac for this. So I'm going to, going to add some Fabri-Tac on here. I should have let this room down. going to add some Fabri-Tac on here. And again, this is not to hold the spine on here for ever. You're, you're gonna sew this on. However, you are gonna want to have, have this well stuck, <laughs> have these put together before you ever start sewing. It's just gonna make it easier when you, when you do start sewing. So we're gonna put this on and then we're gonna have to let this dry overnight and then we'll start sewing. So we're gonna stick this on and you're just gonna line up your line that you've got on there like that. And you're gonna come over here and line this up. Now, this is gonna be real important. You are gonna to want to make sure that this book is square. Sorry, I had to grab a large book here. So this, you're going to want to make sure is square and even. So, Grab a couple of straight edges and just make sure that everything is, is square and straight. And that looks pretty good to me. And your little canvas piece is just gonna hang off just a, just a smidge. So, there we go. 
our spine is glued on. We're going to let that set overnight. And I put it up on this book here and leave that. And we will come back and we'll sew that on. And it's going to look so good. All right, we are back. And this is actually the next morning. I have let this dry overnight with the glue on the spine. And you can see that these holes are back here and we're ready to sew this on. And I will tell you that the lady, Melanie, um, whose YouTube I learned this from, this method, she used she uses a chain stitch, which is what I did there. I think she's also done this where she just did a running stitch back and forth. And I think for this one, I'm going to try that instead of the chain stitch. It's a little bit um, easier to describe how to do that. So I'm going to use this craft thread, and I'm going to tell you, do this at your own risk. <laughs> this book that I'm making, I am gonna keep for myself. This may not be the strongest thread. And the reason that I say that is because there's only two actual threads. So the more plies that you have a thread, the stronger it will be. This is not a super strong thread. I could use my book binding, or I have some other string that I could use, but I want to use this color. So I am going to use this um, embroidery thread and we'll see. I'm going to just say right now, it may, it may break on me. And the reason, uh, how you know how much thread to use is pull this about three times. Whoops, get our little scissors out and cut it. We're going to use one of our little needles here. And you do need a needle, one of these larger in needles. I don't know what these are called, darning needles, embroidery needles. Um... They're just a larger, whoops, they're just a larger, and see, you can see what happened there. So, um, something else that I can do is use my handy dandy little needle threader, which you may or may not have. And we will get this little, whoops, I can't even, I can't even get the thread into the, needle threader. There we go. So now we're going to pull that through. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to leave this as a single thread. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull it through and double it. I'm going to leave it as a single thread. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top and I am going to poke that through. I'm going to leave it leave a tail, leave a little bit of a tail here. I'm going to pull this around the top of this, and I'm going to tell you, I think I'm going to trim that just a smidge there, just a little, just a little smidge. See, that's where we folded it over. So, as long as I don't hit, well, let's see, as long as I don't hit that where I've sewn it, I think we'll be okay. You know what, let's try this a different way. I just think that needs to be trimmed up just a little, just a little hair. Bear with me here for a second. This is, this is how crafts work sometimes. It's, a lot of this is trial and error. So I'm gonna make sure, I can see my little threads right there where I sewed. I'm gonna make sure I don't. Okay, I trimmed just a little, little smidge off of that. 
because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this around the top. I'm gonna bring this around the top of this book. And then I'm gonna tie this in a knot here. And what I'm gonna try to do is make this knot go down in to that little hole there. So, and something else I can do to reinforce that is put a little glue in there, but I'm gonna do that afterwards. So, now I'm gonna come back around. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna circle back over the top again come back through that same hole and kind of pull that tight and then I'm going to go down to the next hole and we're just going to do a running stitch and when you're doing this you, I don't know if you could hear that but Whenever I pushed that needle through, it kind of pulled that glue loose. So don't poke your finger, but hold that down as best you can to put that through like that. Now, this is the little tricky part. What we're gonna do is this. We're gonna poke this through so I'll have the, you can hear that again. I'm gonna poke the needle through so I can see where to put that down. Like that. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna, and that's why it's good to have a, a mat where you can Poke your needle down through and see we're going to do that again. We're going to make a hole from this side and then I can see that hole right there so I know where to put my needle through. And I'm going to keep pulling this tight as I go. And what I may do, since I'm using this one as a, as a demo, is I may do the chain stitch on this side so you can see the difference. And I'm gonna use a different color thread on the back also. Now I'm gonna poke this through again. So I have my little hole there. And you can see those holes didn't line up and it's okay. It, it, I like it, it adds, for me, it adds to the quirkiness of a handmade book. I think it just, I think it looks cool like that, personally. But if you want it to be uniform, you can certainly measure those holes before you poke them. So we're gonna go. Now, when we move this, oops, let's get our little hole here so I know where to come back through. All right. Keeping that pull tight, right? Now, we're gonna come around, back through and try not to split your thread. Try to go through that same hole, but not through the thread. I hope that makes sense.
and then we're going to come around again and again try not to split your thread just try to put your needle in between those threads now we are set up make sure those are like laying like you want them now we are set up to come back down and make our running stitch so it will look like one long even stitch through here again trying to be careful not to split not to go through the thread which you know is not the easiest thing okay we are almost there so this is not difficult as you can see if if sewing if, if you say, I, I don't know how to sew, sewing makes me nervous, I don't know how to use a needle and thread, you can see this is not difficult. You are, this is the simplest little stitch that one can make. It's a running stitch. So that's why I started with this. I'm gonna show you on the other side how to do the other style of stitch so we're almost there uh oh I almost pulled that out okay last one here all right so as you can see we are going to end in the same place that we started. And my little knot moved there. So I'm going to work to work to fix that. But also, I will tell you that once I get this all done, I will cover this. You don't have to cover this stitch if you don't want to. You can leave that stitch exposed, but I'm gonna put a sheet of paper and glue it down over this. You don't have to do that, but we will we will more than likely do that on this project. So I'm gonna, gonna end this stitch. I'm gonna go around I'm gonna go under these two stitches. Oopsie, look at what I did. I'm gonna go around these and I am gonna tie this off again using this tail. And you can choose to end your, your stitch another way, your, your sewing, but I'm just gonna use what I have there because I'm gonna glue this and it should be fine. I should have left a little more tail there. All right, there we go. So I have those knots there in the top. I'm gonna, gonna cut this, trim that up a little bit and I'll put a little glue in that hole and we have that sewn on. And see how, see how that's kind of wonky? I love that. I love the way that looks. I think it just adds such a character to this journal. It's unlike any other journal out there and that's what I like about doing these handmade journals like this. So, I'll be back and we'll do the chain stitch on this side. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this lavender thread for the back. Um, I think it, 
it will be easier for you to see. I was going to use a blue, but I think this lavender will be easier to film. So again, we're just going to pull out about three lengths, a little more, of the from the length. And here we go with this. We'll see if I can do it this time. And I, I, my nails, my fingernails look terrible. I need, I'm in desperate need of a, of a manicure. I've got my, my Olive and June that I have not used and I need to, I need to, I need to do that. I should have done that before I decided to film, but I know you're not here to watch my fingernails. There are other YouTube videos for that. <laughs> I'm definitely not in that business, but I do love my Olive and June, and I think on my last video, I left a link, um, and I'll do that again, just if you're interested in that, that uh, nail manicure set. Okay, here we go. Enough about that. Chain stitch. We're going to start the same way. We're going to we're going to come in from the back to the front. Let me start over. We're going to come in from the back to the front and we're going to go, this is the top of the book. So we're going to chain stitch down and we're going to try to get your needle as close to the top of that hole as you can get it. This will make sense in a minute. And I, again, it's a tip that um, Melanie Sullivan, and, and in case I haven't said it on this tutorial, I will link, I will link her video because she is where I learned this from. And I always like to give credit where credit is due. And if you want to watch her tutorial, um, feel free. She has um, a lot of tools that she uses that I do not have. So I've improvised. There's my little knot there. Okay. Now, we're going to chain stitch. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around the top again. We're going to try to come through, back through the hole, same hole, without splitting our thread. Okay, and we want to make sure that thread is lined up where we want it. Okay, so this time, I'm pulling that and I'm not meaning to. So now we are here and we are going to go down through this hole, keeping your needle at the top at the top of that hole that you made. That's important because we're gonna pull this up and we don't want to stretch that spine. We've, we've gone down through. Now we're gonna flip the book over. So this is where your chain stitch comes in. So what we're gonna do we're on the outside and we're gonna put our needle underneath your threads up here, okay? And we're gonna pull through and we're gonna pull it tight. Now, depending on how sturdy and durable your thread is, So we're going to pull that tight and come back down and go back through again that hole. Again, try really hard not to put your needle through your thread to split it. So there you go. That's your chain stitch. You can see it's made a chain. So pull it tight up because remember we've got our holes at the top and I, my little arrow there is a nice reminder 
And then we're gonna go back down, staying at the top of that hole. Back down through. We're gonna come around and we're gonna pull it up again. Pull it up to keep it tight. Keep that chain stitch tight. And we're gonna, once again, the chain that we just made, we're gonna go underneath those two threads. And we're gonna pull it tight and go back down through the hole where you just came. So, you can see the difference there from this running stitch to this chain stitch. So you can see that this gives you two threads on each hole, between each hole. This one, we only have one. So that's the difference, and that is gonna make this a little sturdier to be honest so we're gonna go back to the net we're gonna go down to the next one through the top part of that hole come around so we're gonna go through underneath I'm not through underneath those threads again Pull it, pull it tight. Always remember to keep pulling it up and pulling it tight around that. And then back through. Turn it around, pull it tight. And then we're gonna go through again, the top part of your hole there. We're gonna pull it tight. We're gonna go underneath. Again, don't let your needle split those threads because if you split those threads, it is not gonna be pretty and it's not gonna give you the strength that you need. So, Always try to be really cautious about putting your needle through. See, that's what I'm talking about. You don't want to go through the ply, the the, the strings of, that make up your, your thread or your string or whatever you're using here. Turn it over, pull it up tight. And then we're going to go down through the next one. Remember the top. I'm trying to keep this as steady as I can so you can see a little easier what I'm doing. Again, go underneath. And see, it's easy to, to split your threads like that. And then we're gonna go down. I really like that color on there too. It's pretty. And then we're gonna go down. Pull up, go under these threads. And that's kind of one way you'll you'll get the feel for the the tautness or the tightness of your threads when you start putting your needle through there. You'll see how tight or how loose those are and you can adjust before you make that next stitch. Pull it tight, and we're going to go to the next one. And we're going to pull. And go under. Something else you can do is once you get that under, you could then pull that string and tighten those up. 
just for a little added security. I'll show you what I mean on this next stitch. So I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna go under this and then I'm gonna pull that tight which will tighten that stitch and you can feel it We are almost to the bottom here. And we're gonna do the same basic thing that we did at the top, but we're gonna tie that off at the bottom So we're at the bottom, we're in our last hole there, and we're just gonna do the same thing we did at the top. We're gonna wrap it around the outside of the book. We're gonna come through, I'm about to do it again there. We're gonna come through and we're gonna wrap it twice. And you can wrap it three times if you want to. You can wrap it more. depending on what look you want. So there we go. So now we're gonna tie this off. I'm gonna run that under. And make a knot. And that knot is gonna be down in that little hole there. And again, I'm gonna put some glue, that little knot has moved up. I'm gonna put some glue on those knots before I trim too much of these threads because I wanna make sure they don't come undone. So there you go. That is how you can attach these front and back covers to your soft spun using your painted canvas. And we've got our running stitch on one side and we've got our chain stitch on the other. So choose which one you want. I'm actually gonna go back in and run another stitch of this yellow. And I'm not gonna film that because you've already seen me do that, but I'm gonna do that for strength on my book. And at that point, we will be ready to put in our um, cover pages, our inside cover pages, and put our signatures in. All right, I just wanted to share this um, next little step. I trimmed up my threads, and I'm gonna be honest, I really messed this one up because I really want that knot to be in that hole and it's not. I've, I've pulled that, um, I've pulled that out of there somehow whenever I was sewing. The rest of these, I'm able to get down into the holes there. You can also see that I did go back and add another running stitch and I used uh, just a kind of a green color. I just thought that would be interesting since this is kind of a rainbow theme. So I added that off, off camera and I used one of my little bone folders um, to work to get my little knots down into those holes. And the next step then is to add a little glue into not every hole, but into those holes where your knots are. That one is not into the hole, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on that. 
but you just want to give it a little extra strength there. Something else I did, because this running stitch came back and we had two knots at the top, whereas the chain stitch, we had a knot up here and a knot down here. I, I started, you know, if you recall, I started the yellow from the top and went down. I flipped it over and I started the green actually from the bottom. That way, both my knots for the green would be up here and both my knots. So it didn't put all four of these knots in one, in one hole. So I hope that makes sense. So that is how we're gonna finish that off. I'm gonna smush that down as best I can to make this as flat as possible. That little knot, I wanna flatten that out because we're gonna put our little end sheets on here and I want that to be as flat as I can get it so put your little glue on there and flatten that out. 